Okay, you can begin the uh, cloud recordings. Cloud started. And I'll pass it on to you, Sergeant Katowski. Thank you much. Good afternoon, and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Sightings and Dispositions. This time, the Council staff please turn on their video. Please place electronic devices on vibrate or silent. If you wish to submit testimony, you may do so at testimony at council.nyc.gov. That is testimony at council.nyc.gov. Thank you. We're ready to begin. Good afternoon. I'm Councilmember Adrian Adams, Chair of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Sightings, and Dispositions. I'm joined remotely today by Councilmember Ku and other members of the committee will be joining shortly. Today, we will be voting on the Landmark Preservation Commission's designation of the Manita Street Historic District. The subcommittee held a public hearing on this item on September 22nd. We will also hold a public hearing on a pre-considered application submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development related to the 505 West 134th Street cluster. Before we begin, I recognize the subcommittee council to review today's hearing procedures. Thank you, Chair Adams. I am Angelina Martinez Rubio, counsel to the subcommittee. Members of the public who wish to testify were asked to register for today's hearing. If you wish to testify and have not registered, please go to www.council.nyc.gov to sign up now. If you're a member of the public who wants to watch this hearing, please watch the hearing on the New York City Council website. All people testifying before the subcommittee will be on mute until they are recognized by the chair to testify. Each applicant panel will be recognized as a group. Members of the public will be recognized one at a time. And actually I take that back because I think we're gonna call you in panels, but recognize to speak one at a time. When the chair recognizes you, your mic will be unmuted. Please confirm that your mic is unmuted before you begin speaking. Public testimony will, lim will be limited to two minutes per witness. If you have additional testimony you would like the subcommittee to consider, or if you have written testimony you would like to submit in lieu of appearing before the subcommittee, you can email it to landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number or project name in the subject line of the email. During the hearing, council members who would like to ask questions should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear at the bottom of, your, of the participant panel. I will announce council members who have questions in the order that they raise their hand. Chair Adams will then recognize members to speak. Witnesses are reminded to remain in the meeting until they are excused by the chair. Council members may have questions. Lastly, there may be extended pauses if we encounter technical problems. We ask that you please be patient as we work through these issues. Chair Adams will now continue with today's agenda items. Thank you, Council. I see that we've been joined by Council Member Barron as well. We're going to begin uh, with uh, HPD presentation of the pre-considered LU 505 West 134th Street cluster. Uh, LU for application number 202-15006 HAM concerning the 505 West 134th Street cluster. This application was submitted by HPD pursuant to Article 16 of the General Municipal Law and Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law requesting the approval of an urban development Urban Development Action Area Project, waiver of the designation requirements of Section 197C and 197D of the Charter, and an exemption from real property taxes for three city-owned five-story residential build buildings located at 505, 523, and 527 West 134th Street, Borough of Manhattan, together called the 505 West 134th Street cluster in Council District 7, which is represented by Council Member Levine. This application will facilitate the preservation of 69 units of affordable home ownership. Council, please call the HPD panel. The applicant panel is 
Sarah Mallory and a Habi Uwa for HPD and Larry Hirschfield for ELH Management LLC. Please unmute. This is Larry Hirschfield. Can you hear me? Yes. And this is Ahi Ua, um, Deputy Director for AMCP. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. And Sarah Mallory with HPD. Okay, that's everyone. Council, please administer the affirmation. Panelists, please raise your right hands and state your names. Sarah Mallory, HPD. Ahi Ua, HPD. Larry Hirschfield, ELH. Um, do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and in answer to all council member questions? I do. Okay, I do. thank you. I do. Thank you very much. You may begin. Great. I'll go ahead and start. Thank you so much. My name is Sarah Mallory, and I'm the Executive Director for Government Affairs at HPD. This pre-considered land use item 20215006 HAM consists of the proposed disposition and the approval of Article 11 tax benefits for three partially occupied city-owned buildings located at 505 West 134th Street, Block 1988, Block 25, Block 1988, Block 12, Block 1988, Block 8 in Manhattan Council District 7. Known as the 505 West 134th Street ANCP cluster, the buildings will be developed through HPD's Affordable Neighborhood Cooperative Program, ANCP. Under the program guidelines, city-owned multiple dwellings are conveyed to restoring communities HGFC for $1 per tax lot and then rehabilitated by the private developer selected through a competitive process. The developer will sign a site development and management agreement with restoring communities that will be in effect until co-op conversion occurs and title transfers from restoring communities HDFC to the individual cooperative. From the time of the cooperative conversion, the developer will remain the property manager for at least one year. After the first year, the co-op will have the choice of keeping the developer as property manager or hiring a new company approved by HPD. The buildings entered into city ownership through the in-rem foreclosure process between 1977 through 1993 and have been participating in the tenant interim lease program or the TIL program as early as 2002. As a requirement of the TIL program, the existing tenants form tenant associations to manage their building and collect rents under a net lease from the city of New York. The 505 West 134th Street ANCP cluster has a total of 69 units of which 44 are currently occupied and 25 are vacant. Currently, these tenants are ready to move forward with next steps in cooperative conversion under HPD's ANCP. The existing occupants will be able to purchase their rent for roughly $2,500 and the initial maintenance is anticipated to be set at 40% AMI or approximately $800 for a one bedroom unit, $980 for a two bedroom apartment and $1,130 for a three bedroom apartment. The household AMI targets for the vacant apartments will be 100%. The designated developer LH Management LLC has been selected to develop the site. The buildings include a mixture of unit types that will undergo substantial rehabilitation. The work will consist of structural joist replacement, electrical upgrades, asbestos and lead removal, as well as a replacement of building systems such as plumbing upgrades and new boilers. The scope of work also includes hallway upgrades, new entry doors, upgrades to apartment interiors, including new flooring, painting, lighting, and new bathrooms and kitchen fixtures. The building envelopes will also be upgraded with masonry repair work and replacement of windows, roofs, and mailboxes. Some unit layout changes will be required so that the renovated buildings comply with current 2014 building code and handicap accessibility requirements. Each building's rehab will follow the uniform federal accessibility standard guidelines and 5% of the units will be renovated with accessibility for mobility and 2% for hearing and visually impaired households. Post rehab, there will be 
two one bedroom, 46 two bedroom, and 21 three bedroom apartments, and all three buildings will apply for a new certificate of occupancy. In addition to seeking disposition approval, HPD requests a 40 year Article 11 tax exemption in order to help the shareholders maintain affordability. The term of the tax exemption will be co terminus with the regulatory agreement, and the total tax benefit is approximately 12.5 million with a net present value of $3.5 million. In order to facilitate the development of the 505 West 134th Street ANCP cluster, HPD supports approval of this project. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I now invite my colleagues to ask questions and I do see that Council Member Barron has a question. Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you to the panel. I just have a couple of questions. Uh, you said that there are 44 current occupants in this location. Yes, Do we sir. know how many of those 44 persons plan to uh, apply for the co-op status? Um, yeah, I do, or can you unmute on this one? I think in order, you can't, okay, mm -hmm. so. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I can answer that. Um, right now, what we're seeing is that the majority of the 44 tenants um, will be eligible uh, for Section 8 based on their income levels. Um, so at this point, we're looking at all 44 potentially applying for Section 8 and hopefully qualifying to aid with their maintenance payments. And what outreach have you done to the 44 tenants that are there? Are they, how involved are they aware and supportive? Yeah. Um, so for each cluster that we have in ANCP, we uh, pre-engage tenants prior to starting any pre-development work to make sure that they're fully on board and excited about moving forward and becoming cooperative shareholders. And during the pre-development phase, we hold meetings, at least four meetings during pre-development um, when we meet certain milestones. Um, so at this current point, we do have the majority of tenants signed off on their updated unit layouts. And typically, we see that as a sign that they're excited and eager to move forward. And where will the tenants go while the apartments are being renovated? Um, so HPD is working with ELH management on a relocation strategy. Um, I believe one of the buildings is currently vacated already. Um, that occurred prior to pre-development work. Um, that was done because of specific issues with the building. So those tenants have already been relocated and they'll stay put during the construction period. Uh, the other two buildings, ELH management is gonna devise a relocation strategy um, to either find units in their portfolio or within the community to house during construction. And I could let Larry expound on that if you would like to. Uh, sure. Um, hello, council member Barron and other council yeah. members. Um, we have a number of buildings in the immediate area. We're going to look to, uh, first of all, meet with, and we've already met with the, the uh, future shareholders individually, go over any uh, specific needs they have uh, relating to uh, physical needs, being on a low floor, proximity to doctors, schools, so on and so forth, um, and then immediately seek affordable uh, apartments in the immediate area, either in our portfolio or in the portfolios of other uh, affordable housing uh, owners and managers that, that we know uh, in order to keep the relocation budget at, at a minimum, but all the uh, apartments will be uh, in better condition than the uh, existing apartments are now. Um, we've done this uh, many times uh, working with HPD back to 1995, but we can go more into that later. Thank you. And how long do you anticipate tenants will be out of their present location before their new units are ready? This really is pretty much a full gut renovation. Right. So it's going to be 18 to 24 months, realistically, because they've, uh, you know, they've got to get out before construction starts. Uh, right. We have to work with their schedules. And then my other question is, will people 
uh, remain in units that are presently the same size as they have, or will they have a chance to apply for a larger unit? So someone who may be living uh, in a one bedroom, can they ask to be a co-op owner of a two bedroom or a three bedroom? No, what we do is we uh, bring tenants back to the same size unit they have now. Um, and that's just in recognition of where they've been living uh, since their tenancy with the building. Uh, we do not right size in this co-op program. Okay. And the other question I have is, oh boy, escaped me. Uh, one last question and it was very important. Um, oh, it came back. So the rental that they will pay is 40%. Does that, do we know how that compares to rentals that they are presently paying? Um, yes, yeah, so the maintenance of 40% of right. is much higher than what they're currently paying. Um, I would say on average in all of our till buildings, the um, rent payments are between uh, 15 to 20% AMI. So that, that's where that um, the Section 8 process kicks in to make sure that we can uh, help the building, you know, cover the maintenance that allows them to maintain their building uh, for the duration of the co-op. So might there be an instance of a person who can uh, qualify for purchase price, but not be able to continue because they can't meet the rent? To date, every tenant that has, the only reason why a tenant is not able to, you know, make the rent payments is because of income issues. Right. Uh, to date, every tenant that's required Section 8 through this program, we've been able to secure it. And we anticipate that the same tenants, the same issues uh, will arise in this uh, cluster and we'll be able to obtain Section 8 vouchers for those tenants that are unable to meet um, the rent payments or the maintenance payments. Well, I would just, that would be my only concern because the rest of it uh, sounds very appealing and very practical and very much needed. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just want to know if there are tenants that can perhaps get someone in their family to loan them what they need to make them purchase the apartment, but not qualify because mm -hmm. they can't continue to pay the rent. That would be the only question that I have. So if you could finally dig into those uh, particulars and by the time we get for the final vote, have that, I would appreciate that. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Council Member Barron. Council, are there any more questions from council members? Let me double check, but I don't see any other hands raised. So, so we could move on to do our vote if you would like. All right, All right. Well, there being no more questions for this panel. Uh, the panel is excused. And we can get those answers to Council Member Barron as soon as possible. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to our vote. Thank you, Councillor. On September 22nd, the subcommittee held a public hearing on LU 641, 681, the Landmark Preservation Commission's designation of the Menida Street Historic District and Bronx Community District 2 in Chair Salamanca's district and Chair Salamanca, Chair Salamanca is in support of the project. The public hearing on this item is now closed. Council, please call the roll. Chair Adams. I vote aye. Council member Coop. Aye. Council member Barron. I vote aye. The vote now stands as three in the affirmatives, no negatives, no abstentions, and we will leave the vote open. Okay, thank you. The vote is open. Okay, we will uh, continue. Council, are there any members of the public wishing to testify? Yes, we do have members of the public who signed up to testify. And the first panel will be... Um, let me double check, Chair. Um, so we have a couple of the people signed up to testify already here. Do I have Mr. Theo and Mr. Wilson are here to testify. Can we admit them 
so that we can take their testimony. Mr. Theo Chino is here to testify and available. He just needs to be unmuted. Hi, hello, council member. Start in time. Hi, my name is Theo Chino. I have testified in front of this council previously. And as you remember, I live at 640 Riverside Drive, uh, the corner of 141 in Councilman Levine District. I am opposed to any Title 11 transfer like this one, which is exactly what they promised us six, 20 years ago. 20 years ago, HPD came in our building and told us exactly what they said in the council today. And to this day, we have not yet have done the transfer into an HDFC program. So as tenant in this program, I urge the council to ask me question about the detail of this type of program. Also, the fact that seven employee of HPD in the past five year has been whistleblower, has been arrested, and the latest one of the HPD employee arrested over placard abuse is proof that the HPD program is plagued with corruption, which led developer like HLM development who I just looked up right now on who owns this building and at 508 West 158 1 Street they have 41 open violation to this day to their building so what are they promised they're going to do the same thing that has happened countless over and over and over so please stop the title 11 do not approve this do an investigation into HPD, how this building end up in this condition in the first place. Because right now we have a payment balloon that is slated for $22 million that none of us can pay together except raising the rent over 400%. We pay $200 a month. Now they want us to tell us, oh, you're going to pay 1,500. So where is the affordability in this type of project? Ask me. Ask me detailed question and I will tell you how bad this project is. So please vote no in approving this until we're done investigating HPD. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, any question, please do so. Thank you, Mr. Theo. Are there any questions from council members for this witness? I don't see any hands raised, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you very much for your testimony. The no. next person to testify is A. Wilson. Hello. Hello, thank you Starting. for joining me. You have two minutes to speak. You may begin. Hello, thank you for this opportunity to speak up. I'm uh, speaking as a comment to all three buildings that I had received information regarding this process today, 505 134th Street, 505 West 134th Street and 523 West 134th Street. I myself in my experience as being in a situation that the residents are being subjected to has uh, led to a, a very deep problem regarding the lack of oversight and enforcement by HPD. The developers flaunt their roles as owners and do whatever they want and uh, regarding Retaliation that I'm also subject to as speaking up. This is a current issue. HPD has refused to resolve the ongoing complaints and concerns regarding, for example, the scope of work and the commitments by the developers to completing that scope of work. I would like to uh, caution also on the Article 11 process that once this process is completed, the owners can do what they want. In my situation, uh, myself and representing one building and another representative in another building in the same parcel of buildings had raised issue with the fact that there had been a loan taken by the developer as part of a PLP program without review or consent by the shareholders for which there was also the taking of the equity for the residents, which in this case would have been the value of the unit if sold within the 80% of the uh, AMI as an HDFC owner. So there had been a promise by HPD in front of this body at the city council six months later for a footnote for some remedy 
which of course did not exist. I'm so, expired. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, to conclude, please review carefully. There should be a moratorium on all these transfers and a deep investigation into these private public partnerships involving HPD. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much, Ms. Wilson. Are there any questions from council members for this witness? Um, no questions from council members at this time, Ms. Madam Chair. Okay, thank you very much, uh, council. And uh, thank you uh, for your testimony, uh, Ms. Wilson. Are there any additional members of the public who wish to testify on this item? Um, I don't believe there are, um, Madam Chair, but I'm double checking. Madam Chair, it looks like there are no more witnesses to testify okay. on this item. Okay, thank you, Council. There being no other members of the public who wish to testify on the public hearing on preconsidered LU for application number 20215006 HAM, the 505 West 134th Street cluster is now closed and the item is laid over. The vote on LU 681 is still open and we will leave the vote open. Ten minutes, Council. Um, that should be that should be fine, Madam Chair. Okay, the vote is open. The vote remains open for ten minutes, and we will uh, recess for ten minutes. Mm -hmm.
Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, Council Member. Uh, How are you? I'm doing well. Okay. Name you and the vote is still open, Council? Um, so we're going to continue with the vote on land use item 681. Council Member Miller. I vote aye. Council Member Traeger. I vote aye. So the vote on land use 681 is now closed and the final vote is five in the affirmative, no negatives, no abstentions. And the item will be recommended to the full land use committee for a vote. Thank you very much, Council. Uh, the vote on LU 681 is now closed. That concludes today's business. And I just want to say hello to Council Member Traeger. I'll acknowledge you as well for being here today. Thank you so much. I remind uh, those that are watching that if you have written testimony on, today, on any of today's items, you may, on today's item, you may submit it to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number or the project name and the subject hearing. And I'd like to thank the applicants members of the public, all of my colleagues on this committee, subcommittee council, thank you, Angelina, land use staff, and the sergeants at arms for participating in today's hearings. This meeting is hereby adjourned.